I just want to wait out the blues. I'm being polite. It's Kevin Kenny. This is the Build Series live from New York City. And our guest, who's going to join us on stage in just a few moments, played a sold-out show, headlining show at Irving Plaza just up the street here in New York last night. And the new EP due out this summer, Echoes of Departure and the Endless Street of Dreams Part 2, is on the way. Please let's give a warm build welcome to Logan Henderson. Hey. They're in shock. There's like a delay there. They can't believe it's really you. Uh, they, yeah, they're, it's super giggly crowd. Was, was anyone at the show last night? Me. There you go. All right, cool. This is always cool when you do it after the show. I was saying in the back because it's almost like an after party. You enjoy the set last night. Then you get to be like... Unless they didn't load. enjoy it, then they're like, yeah, we were there. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming to get their refunds, actually. Yeah, no. Uh, no, I'm sure the show is amazing. And uh, you're on tour now with Jake Miller. Yep. He's been on Build a Bunch. I heard it was Jake's first time playing Irving Plaza. Is that true? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't believe that, but that's amazing. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm trying to remember, because we've been here a lot. I was saying yesterday night that New York was the first time I ever played live. Times Square. Times Square. Can we go there? I heard you say that. Like, what was that? That was wild. I don't know. That was like the first performance with BTR, and they just put us right in the middle. I, I you know, I was terrified. <laughs> were you terrified? I was gonna like, what are the emotions? Or like, were you ready for it? Like, yeah, we were ready for it, but it, it is kind of terrifying. I think now that I've performed and you know I've gotten to really be comfortable in my own skin and, and really the music that I'm doing. So last night, it was a little technical issues, but you know what? It was still the crowd was completely lit, and we just had a great time. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Keep it really roll with the punches. People get it. Yeah, it's absolutely. Do you find that, you know, starting on a scale like that, Times Square, just to use an example, and then do you find it's harder now to play, you know, you're playing pretty, you know, Irving Plaza is a big venue, but still yeah. it's not Times Square, let's say. Legendary. Do you, do you find, oh, of course. Um, do you find that playing more intimate venues, is it is it more challenging? Like, how does that compare to, to the, the scale of a Times Square, for instance? I think as I release music and we're, st I mean, I there's people who have followed me for a long time, but I mean, it, in a way, I'm still a new artist. I've only released seven or eight songs, so this is just the beginning for me. I, I like to connect with people on, on a scale like that. It makes it very easy for me. Um, I, I think it's a really cool connection that I have, and I, I, look, I look for more like intimate settings, places I can really get with people instead of like a large thing, especially in the very beginning. I like to kind of like take steps and take my own time totally. with it. Yeah. yeah. I, as a fan, I don't know if you guys agree, but, like, I, I kind of get bummed out when an artist, like, blows up and then I can't see them in these small venues anymore. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Because it's, like, the connection is so real, both for you and then for us. And Yeah, awesome. there's something special there, but, again, I, I, I love intimate settings. It's It really makes everything, I don't know, just... Um, Sweeter. Yeah, it means more for sure. Yeah. Um, I, something that piqued my interest when I was learning about your creative process is how uh, visual music is for you. Like these, whether Absolutely. it's colors or whether it is like the, the visuals or the imagery of songs will come to you as you're making the song. Yeah. Can you speak on that? That's really interesting. Oh, that's the best part. Um, I like to kind of be in charge of everything. Uh, it's, sometimes it's a little a little much. So my like even working with producers and other friends, that they have been you know kind enough to kind of give me my creative space because I can sometimes get a little OCD with stuff so but, but it's, there's a clear vision kind of when I, whenever I hear certain sounds and I, it's kind of carried out through everything that you've seen so far right pull me deep and with speak of the devil and all, all the different kind of like singles that have been out just the artwork from the way it looks the way that we see it on camera to the way it sounds everything is kind of its own specific story totally and I've uh, been lucky enough for everybody to kind of let me experiment and, and do that with part one and you know part two to follow coming up soon yeah. hey and by the way I should have led with this, but congratulations on the success of Pull Me Deep. Thank you. And Appreciate that. For, uh, for loving yeah. here. It's tough to do. Relatively short time. It was the second top 40 single that we had. Yeah. And um, everybody really loved it. And it was a special song to me. And so, I, yeah, I couldn't be more thankful. Why is it so special to you? Um, well, Pull Me Deep was written time that I really needed it, I guess. So I was able to kind of verbalize what I wanted to see out of myself and a certain change within who I was. And so it was really more of a kind of letter of encouragement and it kind of helped me, you know, lead me in the right direction. Yeah. So before you, you know, before we do something, we visualize it, we talk about it, we see it, we want to make it happen, and then we take the steps necessary to do that. And that song was that for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, getting back to this this idea of the imagery and the and the visuals that go along with music, take me back to like the first sort of, oh, there hey. was a color. <laughs> I know the story, you know, the story's been told a bunch of times of, you know, you're watching the Netflix show of a similar name. And right. That's where the, I guess the title kind of comes from. But um, like, was there a color early on? Is, does it work like that? Is it almost like the synthesis? Sometimes it does, thing, not or? all the time. This, this, specifically this type, which I worked with, um, one of one of my um, close friends, and um, he does kind of all the artwork for me, but uh, Pete. 
And um, this was something that I had always kind of seen in my head was something that kind of looked like that as far as the font goes. And then, yeah, the colors, um, the, the desert kind of did that for me. That wasn't necessarily something that I saw right away. But uh, once we got out into the desert, once we kind of saw a few different versions of this, this was something that I really kind of um, glued in on. We were like, chatting uh, before we went live that uh, it was the video, which came out beautiful, by the way, for End of the World. It actually you. was kind of made on a whim. Like two days, you're just like, let's shoot in the desert. It was the last Vegas minute. Now. And I had a couple of friends who were like, we can do it. I was like, okay, I have two days before I go off on tour and I'm doing all my other stuff. So I was in the studio and they were like, okay, we'll do it. And so there it is. We right did. There. Yeah, we came out right into the desert, brought our, <laughs> brought our, went the night before to go to Home Depot and got that uh, door. And uh, and then the desert kind of does the speaking for itself. I mean, the desert is a magical place for me, and I I, I love uh, kind of um, paying tribute to my little spot in Vegas now. Does the desert inspire you as an artist? Absolutely. How so? Desert is strange. It's it's beautiful, but it's also very strange, and there's a sense of isolation. Yeah. There's a sense of complete freedom and openness, and um, yeah, I don't. I, there's something just kind of magic about it. I didn't really think that way before I had gotten a spot there. And then once I really kind of gave myself a chance to go to Red Rock, which I live very close to, um, and really kind of just be one with with nature, I, did I find out like there's a lot of magic there? And well, I'm, it must be special because I, you know, I think I live here in New York City. I think of a Times Square, but if you get on the Strip, I mean, that is like sensory overload, right? As yeah, an and I don't live. I don't well, live of course, by the I don't Strip. Think, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole different. That's a whole different inspiration. (laughs) Oh, Caesar Palaces, yes. Um, Um, Yeah, it's very different from like the strip. I I love that kind of energy as well. That's a a very separate type of energy, but I like that it's all kind of combined in one. But the minimalism of the desert must—it almost just leaves you with nothing but your creativity. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's kind of—I think the song reflects that, and so and so does the video. Uh, You get hounded a lot for the meaning behind this song, and I I like that you're an artist that takes the approach of like, dude, it's whatever you want it to be, because I think that's that's what I like about music is interpreting it, sort of making it about my own life, whatever I'm going through. And I was thinking, you know, you do the acting stuff too, but that must be such a unique uh, attraction to the art form of music, because music is something that can be left up to interpretation far more than say film or TV, right? In some ways, yeah. I mean. I think all of those are kind of universal languages, but music absolutely is. I mean, that's that's why I've, I'm fell in love with it in the first place. Right. It's just there are so many different things you can take from it, and it doesn't have to be one thing. I love the idea of not having one specific thing that it is. It is right. multidimensional. Totally. Yeah. What is something that music affords you that maybe acting doesn't? Um, you know what? They, I, for me personally, I think that they build on each other. Um. But I mean, I guess as far as like, you know, some of my favorite films, the music that's put into that, I mean, they, they do go hand in hand. I don't think that it is separate, really. Okay. When you watch a movie, some of the moments that we remember most are due to, you know, it's product of the people that are putting the music and the score behind it. And that's yeah. what makes a, such a beautiful thing all in one. And so a lot of people ask me, like, do you have other people make the videos for you as far as the, you know, the script or what you want to see out of it. And for me, not so much. I, I want to be a part of that. And I think if I have the idea and the vision to do it, then why wouldn't I? Right. And so I think they very much go hand in hand. I guess with the theme of film and music kind of being one and the same, is that why we got the part one and the part two EP? Is this almost like a sequel to part one, would you say? It's in, in some ways. One was because I thought that there was, like I said, each story is a little bit different. And, and musically, we kind of go through some some waves and yeah. so I kind of wanted people to take a break Se- seven tracks I think was enough for people to understand and get that information and then I wanted the other information to c- come at, at, at a different time where people had time to soak that in and then right. you know take a break and come back to something that might be you know very different and some of the stories are very reminiscent of each other this one I feel like is very reminiscent of Sleepwalker so I wanted to do things that were from a different point of view but maybe the same topic I like, I like the, I mean, it's rare these days, it's unfortunate to say, but the thought that goes into this, it's, it's like, you know, it's yeah. appreciated. Yep. That's awesome, man. Uh, you this is why I don't sleep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, you produced this song, am I right? Was uh, this a co-production no. or was this a... No, I wrote the song. So I wrote, wrote the song, song. With, um, with a very good friend of mine and then um, the production group actually did the same guys who did Pull Me Deep. Oh, okay. Um, very good friends of mine and um, just extremely talented individuals. What is like your perfect creative process? Is it is it getting in there with a friend? Is it writing on your own? Is it like is I love it working ideas? with friends. For me, like, and I, I meet a lot of people and a lot of people who want to get in the studio. But for me, before we even go into the studio, I usually just want to hang out. 
Right. So I usually like to just see what somebody's about, and if we connect on a level, then I usually am like, let's get in the studio. Let's see what that's going to be like. Totally. And I think it's really more about connection and um, understanding each other. That is the most important part to me. And I think if there's someone like, you know, you have friends who can bring different parts of you out. Yeah. And I want writers and creative people and just amazing human beings around me to do just that. And I want to do the same for them. Right. I uh, I heard that you're reading scripts again. I am, yeah. That's really exciting. It is, yeah. Because it's funny because it's kind of a full circle, right? Like if you're a more casual fan at home and you're watching, you know, Logan, of course, known really for music overall. But you went out to L.A. initially, I think, when you were like 17 years old for acting. Right. And now you finally have at least time in your life because you're not sleeping, it sounds like, totally. to, to read some scripts. What goes into reading scripts? Like what is that like? Um, For me, people are like, what's your dream character? And I don't really have a dream character. For me, it really is just about the reading. If I want to be able to connect to a story, I want to be able to connect to a character. And if I think that there's something that I have or an experience or something that clicks in me, then that's what I want to go for. It doesn't matter what the role is as long as I can play it. The totally. best I possibly can. Well, it's like it's like music, right? Going back, they are hand in hand. Absolutely. Because, like, whether a song hits you, whether a film, or a sc- screenplay hits you, right? You know, it's got. It's the same way in the studio. I don't go to the studio every single day. I, I want to make sure that I have something to say, and that there's some days. Some days are good days, and some days you're like, all right, we'll throw it in today, and we'll come back again tomorrow. Right. Absolutely. Um, we got so many questions. I thought this would be fun because uh, you're awfully popular, Logan, if you didn't already know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll just go to Twitter and literally just live on Build right now. I read them off my phone. Okay. Uh, these com- came from some of your biggest uh, fans on Twitter. And it says, this one comes from Kimmy. Mm-hmm. And uh, the question is, if you were stranded on a deserted island and you could only bring one person with you, who would you bring in your life? One of these. Yeah. I don't know. That's hard. I mean, I take my whole family, but you know, my mom, my mom, like nothing gets done without her. Yeah. She's, she's an amazing, like, she's an angel. So mom, yeah, my mom. That's awesome. Good answer. It's a part where you guys go, oh, <laughs> they're in such a day. It's just like oh, right. Logan. So dreamy. Uh, all right. Petra is a uh, Petra Petra. Uh, when's the first, th- what's, what's the first thing you want to do when tour is over? You're working so hard these days. Is there anything you're looking forward to when tour is over? This is so lame, but we end in LA, and I just was like, I just kind of want to go to Disney World afterwards. Like, go to California Adventure and just like just do mindless stuff. Yeah, and just go have fun, like Six Flags, whatever it is. I just want to go do something mindless. Yeah, yeah, totally. I get that. Uh, this comes from Mara, and she wants to know: Will there also be a European tour that also includes Italy this year, or well, just Europe in general? I've been to. Uh, was that you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's got to call me out, Logan, really? No, it's cool. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> um, no, Italy. I've been to Italy. I love Italy. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go to Europe. I'm ready to kind of hit the spots that I haven't hit. Yeah. Europe is super special to me. I did a lot of things, like did um, Bite My Tongue video in Europe in London. Nice. Um, and I want to go see Amsterdam. I, that, there's a lot of places to still kind of go on adventure. Is there anything like, different about fans over there? Just unique? Not better or worse, but just is there something you look forward to? about? Yeah, there's not a better or worse. Um yeah, I think just everything is a little bit different Yeah. in Europe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's get to Kayla, who uh, says, uh, oh, t- this is more of a demand than a question. Yeah. Um, tell him to drop some hints about the Big Time Rush comeback. There is, there is no Big Time Rush comeback. I mean, okay. we, we've all talked about a few things. Why are there so many th- gasps in the audience right now? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no, there's no plan for a comeback at this moment. Um, everybody's kind of doing their own thing right now. Right. Uh, it's a lot of work to get together. Oh, a bet. lot more than I think people understand. Oh, totally. It's not so easy as like, here we go. So, yeah, and and yeah, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Carla's got another baby on the way. Wow. Um, I haven't talked to James in a minute. I mean, Kendall have been in the studio, so I've enjoyed that time that That's we've cool. shared, especially right before we went on tour. So, uh, yeah, everybody's doing their own thing, um, and we'll let you know when. Don't worry. There you go. We'll Stay tuned. You know. It's like timing with those things. You know what I mean? When the timing's right, it'll happen. Absolutely. All right, let's get to Evelyn really quick. If you could get anyone you want to play in a future music video of yours, I guess let's think of like an actor or an actress, who would it be and why? I've always been a fan of Natalie Portman. She's just beautiful, classy, all around, just an amazing actress. And So I don't know. Just yeah. came to mind. No, absolutely. Just came to mind. Former build guest. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to this next go. one. Uh, Logan's my baby boy. That's their username. How, how is that not taken? That's actually is my it? username. I just <laughs> chose one for myself. 
It's all about self love today on Bills. Totally. Uh, how much songs will be on Echoes? How much? The, poor English. I'm sorry, but uh, how many songs will be right, on right. Echoes of Departure? Six or seven. Three? Okay. I think. It's a long. Why that name for the EP? Why not? All right. I mean, everybody has like a one word. I just it was something that it meant something to me, and I just was like, there are no rules here. Like, yeah. Yeah, I get to do what I want. So I, hell yeah. It's really kind of. Uh, yeah, it it has its own its own meaning, but I figured, yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah. I like it. It's almost like a little Bruce Springsteen. I'm a Bruce guy, and I feel okay, like, cool. I like I don't know. I get that from it. I'm all about Bruce. Uh, how many songs, though? Do, do, can you six say? or seven. Yeah. Oh, six or seven. All right. There you go. Uh, okay. Let's uh, blow through these because we got some audience questions. Uh, Elizabeth says, uh, how do... How does these... Dude, th you guys need to write a little better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of, oh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, how do your encounters with fans today compare to when you first started out uh, with the group? Um, I don't know. That's an odd question. Um, I don't know. I think it's cool. I've, I've grown up with a lot of these with a lot of these people, and so it, it's um, I guess rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, and really cool to see people like as human beings, we change, we grow each and every day, and to see that and to continue a journey, and to be a part of something that happened from such a long time ago. Like there's some history here, and um, I guess it's just special. The longer it goes on, it must become even more special, it, I imagine. It is, right? yeah. yeah. You're soundtracking these people's lives in so many ways. It's yeah, I hope cool. so. Yeah, I'm, let's get back in the studio. I'm, yeah. like, ready now. <laughs> I'm a, uh, yeah, inspired, it, right? it inspires me. Uh, all right, just a couple more of these, and we'll get to the, our friends here okay. uh, in New York. How long did it take you to uh, write End of the World? End of the World didn't take too long to write. I think, actually, we did that all in – the most of it was in one day. The bridge – we had a huge problem with the bridge. Not we. I did. Uh, it took me a long time to mess with the bridge. I didn't like how we had it musically, so we, we changed the format of the bridge completely. I went back in and, and wrote the bridge um, separate. So two days to write all together, but um, we spent a lot of time back and forth in the studio trying to get everything right. right. The, the bridge is, t definitely takes us to a very different place in the entire song, and um, I love what we finally came up with. It just took a moment. Oh, yeah. Uh, any collabs planned in the near future? Your European friends want to know. I know we got some ideas. Yeah, we've been talking about it uh, behind backstage. So any hints? No. No. All right. <laughs> hey. uh, all right. Let's. Uh, this comes from big time voters. Is there a special reason to the order of songs that we're about to get on part two? Uh, how did you decide? And were there any, or how much didn't make the cut? Um, yeah, there's a few that didn't make the cut. Uh, part one and part two are are very much a mood and very much a vibe. Um, there's a lot of songs to be released and a lot of stuff that I'm excited about, things that are very, very different from part one and part two. And so, yeah, everything has its own place. But for part one and part two, it very much is its own little, its own little world. Yeah. And we're, um, we're about to move on to some interesting territory. That's awesome. Uh, what does he usually do? What do you usually do, uh, Logan, uh, when you're stuck during the production of a song? Uh, take a minute. Sometimes go do something that is completely different. Uh, we I try to laugh a lot. Whenever we're stuck in one place, I get very like focused, and I forget to just like let loose and just have fun. And so right. we try to like yeah um, go do something completely different, talk about something else, and then we come back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get to the first fan question. All right. First row. What's your name? I'm Darlacy. But we want to do something before. Right. <laughs> you want to do something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What the hell's about to happen? Oh, They're getting very nervous now. Oh, oh. I love it. I love it. So, what's your favorite song to perform? How did that feel, guys? <laughs> that felt really good. Did it? Okay, cool. Cool. What's your favorite song to perform on stage? Uh, you know what? I think uh, End of the World was really special last night. Everybody held up their phones, put their, put their lights on. And that was one of the first times that it's happened on tour, and it was just a special moment. That is cool. Yeah. It's like the new lighters, you know? Right, totally. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, let's get to our final question. It's going to come from the front row over here. What's your name? My name is Rushnell. Um, what's up? <laughs> Hi. Uh, what's the most embarrassing thing that you ever did that you wish? What's the most embarrassing moment? I don't know. My life is full of embarrassing moments. But uh, I think there was one night that I was on stage and I yelled out the wrong city. That That just never goes over well. It just never goes over. You're like, what's up, y'all? And they're like, not us, yo, not us. I just, And you're just like, how do you come back from that? You're like, no. cool, I'm going to take a moment now and come back. I, I don't know. It's hard to recover from that. That's amazing. That was a test, and you all passed. <laughs> and you all passed. You know where you are. That's amazing. 
It's about uh, where we're going. Yeah. Well, you got so. the city right last night, I assume, right? Yeah, there absolutely. Never forget New York. Off to a good start this, this week. This is my spot. Um, all right. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. They're telling me we got to wrap things up. All right. Logan, thank you so much. You've been yeah, on thank before. You. We appreciate every time you stop by here at Build. This and is uh, the summer's going to be an exciting time for you because I've heard rumors. That's when we're gonna, we can expect part two. You know what's up. So, fingers crossed. Guys, one more time for Logan Henderson. Thank you guys for having me.